guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something to me on Twitter, The Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Undefeated. So yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards, such as our such as permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. All those are for patrons, y'all. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> Why did you get so much mail? I didn't even get this much junk mail when I lived up when I lived topside. Fang filters out all the flyers and shit. Most of the envelopes are about the free swag, but they just talk about the boring terms and conditions. Might be a gift card or something in there though. Could be nice. <sighs> that was enough to set Redline off, rifling through the bag for any envelope with hard with something hard in, with something hard inside it. He's like a raccoon digging through trash, getting his grubby mitts all over my mail. That doesn't seem to stop him from pulling out a few stacks. Tossing them sloppily to both me and Bruce. Bruce is right. Just a lot of lawyer talk, asking for contracts, explaining their gear, how Bruce needs to advertise it. Dumbasses don't really get the situation. Fang pre prevents me from advertising any other brand unless they get the permission from the co from the commissioner. Redline pulls out an envelope. This one's got handwriting. That means it's personal. Bruce is unfazed. Let her rip. The letter tears open and a few photographs fall out. Redline scoops them up, looks at them, and starts giggling before planting them face down on the bed. Oh my god, dude! People mail you nudes? Bruce's porcelain face breaks and he laughs. Shit, really? Been a while since someone tried that. I thought people only did that over DMs. Nah, I don't have any social media or anything like that anymore. Got bored of it. Why would I want anyone to know what I'm doing all the goddamn time? But if they can't hit me, if they cannot, if they can't hit on me in private anymore, I guess they figure out some other way to do it. I used to get lots of ladies with nice bods. A lot of dudes, too. Like, a lot of dudes. He even wrote you some kind of love letter. It's kind of cute. Oh, yeah? I bet it's real romantic. All the best romances start with showing me their giblets. Okay, but he has a really nice body. Good for him. His tone dies down the more Redline talks. Luckily, he moves on, eventually digging through the, res the last of the mail. Redline's amassed a small pile of gift cards. Looks like it'll save him, some Looks like it'll save him a pretty penny. I don't even know when you plan on using those gift cards down here. I've been saving up. Uh, I've been saving up on my vacation days. Just you know, haven't gotten a whole lot of fights lately. Oh yeah, you got one coming up, don't you? Yeah, with Jesse. Gonna need more than a name. Sure, let me just project his face into your mind. Thanks. <laughs> oh. Thanks. Oh, I can see him. I love his. Pl what the fuck is happening? Oh, I love his plumage. He's a, he's a puma. Damn. You gotta work on your projection skills. Anyway, he's one of the bigger names in the lightweights. Thought I recognized his name and his perfect scaly dragon skin. Isn't he way too big to be in the lightweights? I think he came down from the middleweight a while back. He's definitely on the heavier end. Hmm, and you're on the lighter end. That's true. Some fighting leagues have multiple different weight classes, but Fang simplified it down to three. Down here, anything below 180 pounds is considered lightweight. Middleweight goes from 180 pounds to 230, and anything above that is heavyweight. Other fighting leagues chop those up into more smaller weight differentials, usually between 10 to 15 pounds per class. Fang sort of got their edge by being the first to change that. It creates a lot more tension, watching fighters of different weights test their limits. I imagine it makes it makes betting a lot more interesting, too. Obviously, if there's a size mismatch, you'll think the bigger guy wins, but that's not always the case. Granted, fights usually get paired close enough to weights that the class limits don't matter too often. But then you get edge cases, like red lines here. He looks like he's edging around 135, maybe 140 pounds. I didn't receive the projection of Jesse like Bruce did, so I don't know too much about him besides what Redline mentioned earlier. Broad shoulders, thick build. When Fang announced the, the condensing of the weight classes, some people raised a stink, saying it was unfair or scary. But most of them just ended up adapting. Can't afford to lose their jobs in this economy. Sure, it's more dangerous to fight with bigger weight differences, but at least we have a, we have a place to sleep and food to eat. So that makes it all worth it, right? Nope. Redline flops backwards onto the discarded envelopes that covered his bed and lets out a long sigh. He's probably got, what, like 40 pounds on me? I mean, it could be worse. Yeah, your opponent could have like 180 pounds on you. Bruce Smug smile aimed at me disappears as soon as, he, as soon as we make eye contact. 40 pounds is nothing. Red, you're gonna be fine. No, water time? Uh, cool coffee time, actually. And I really doubt it'll be that far apart anyway. Twenty pounds at most. Redline lets out another sigh. 
maybe you're right. 20 is still a lot. Or we can tell Bucky to reschedule, your, reschedule the fight. Ahina sits up immediately. Hey, now, we don't have to go that far. Bucky, ne Bucky never let me hear the end of it. Plus, you know, I really would like to get some, some more time off. There's that confidence. You gonna make that big cat submit? You kidding me? I'll knock him out! It's a bold claim when someone weighs that much more than you. If it was only about 5 or five or 10 pounds, that would be doable, but Jesse's potentially 30% heavier than Redline. That kind of difference can make a fight a lot harder. What about you guys? I can feel Bruce freeze over. Or maybe I'm just projecting. Either way, I'm trying not to make eye contact with Bruce. God, it's fucking awkward ignoring someone when I know they're waiting for me to answer. I sigh and look at Bruce. He has definitely been looking at me since Redline asked. I mean, what about us? You two have another fight eventually, right? <laughs> Wait. Your fight was last night. That's why you were in the med bay. I fucking missed it. Oh, god damn it. Language. Okay. Jesus. Alright. You two have another fight eventually, right? Wait, your fight was last night. That's why you were in the med bay. I fucking missed it, dude. I'm so sorry. How'd it go? I ended up in the med bay, so... I'm still surprised they made you stay there. I didn't break anything. And you're sure about that? Bruce scoffs and rolls his eyes. Yes, I'm sure. I want to win, not hurt you. So the six knees to the gut were, what, a warning? I was trying to tire you out. You little guys have too much stamina, so I just wanted to make sure you couldn't keep fighting. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna knock you out again, and I'm gonna make sure I don't, you know, accidentally break something. Oh, so the stomp in your second fight was just an accident. Of course it was. I don't stomp on someone unless they deserve it. With all the shit you're going through, I'm not about to go out of my way to make it worse. So, like, what exactly is going on? I know Xander said it's some weird contract thing, but all the promos are saying he challenged you. Bruce lets out a sigh and leans back on my bed. All I know is that the system glitched out and now Xander's stuck fighting me. But Fang is framing it like Xander's some rando that has a beef with me. We don't have to do weigh-ins anymore, and, I and now they banned any form of social media. Something's off about the whole situation. A computer, a computer glitch feels like a really easy fix, and Xander said he talked to uh, the commissioner about it. His ears drooped at the mention of the commissioner. Bruce looks at me. Yeah, you want to fill me in on what happened? I only heard bits and pieces. I went about as well as you'd think. He yelled at me about the head kick post. I asked him about fixing our fights, and he just told me, told me to do what I'm told or I'm breaking my contract. Hmm, sounds about right. So the computer fucks up once, and now he's just letting that slide? Doesn't sit right with me. He's usually pretty picky with the championship fights. I get that a lot of Fang's audience is gonna like is gonna like hyper violent fights. That's most of their clientele, yeah. And mismatches are exciting for main events or for the gamblers, but is this still fun for them? Watching the same fight over and over again? Maybe I need to cave your skull in to keep that going. I'm still not a fan of those kinds of jokes, but Bruce sighs out. I don't know. I smell bullshit but I don't know what to make of it. I've asked questions about matchmaking before all this happened, but the old man just shuts me down. And Ted's fucking useless, so yeah. That's where we're at. We just keep fighting? Unless you got any better ideas. We both look over to Redline, who asked the question in the first place. He seems to be deep in thought. Bruce whistles sharply. All right there, Stripes? Hmm? Oh, yeah, totally, just thinking. So are you two, like, friends now? He really needs to stop asking questions. I think this one is on me to give an answer, but given Bruce's extended silence. <laughs> I'm just as lost for an answer as Bruce is, it seems. We both stare at each other for a bit too long. It's hard to say exactly how I feel. Bruce has done some pretty shitty things to me down here, but he also seems genuinely interested in trying to make amends. I, I'd like to be friends. If that's something you're okay with, but I can understand if you'd hate me. One second, y'all. It is water time. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's not that. Hate isn't the right word. I don't know what is. Maybe I'm just mad. I think it's hard to say exactly what I want right now, but I'm glad to hear that you don't want to hurt me. That's fair. And for what it's worth, I am sorry for how this is turning out. I wish I had a better solution. Me too. Maybe we can come up with a solution together. Both of our heads turn back to Redline. It's strange how quiet he's being, but... It's not like I have conversations with other people when he's around, so maybe this is just how he is when he listens. Maybe. Got any ideas? Well, no, but it's not like we're on a time limit, right? You two keep fighting and doing what you need to do, and we'll try to come up with something that fixes everything. I guess it's better than nothing. The problem is, I can't really be seen with you two too often. I'm supposed to hate you, remember? 
but you're here now. Security's got enough on their hands with mail day, and the rest of the guys won't notice me sneaking off just this once. But I gotta keep up appearances, you know? You really don't. Is it too much to ask to not be shitty to me around everyone else? But, uh, I'll try to find time. See what, see what you knuckleheads can come up with. Anything else you guys need? Redline looks around at the pile of free samples he's waiting in. I think you said something about storing some stuff in your room? Bruce lets out a sigh and smiles, getting up to shovel random junk into a box. Redline picks a few things out, namely a water bottle, a few tank tops, and a fur brush, and the rest gets packed up and loaded onto the cart. Another box, another box gets full of trash. Another box gets full of trash, and our room is left only slightly more cramped than it was before. I'll bring, I'll catch you guys up, I'll catch you guys later. Take care. I nod at him. Bruce wheels the cart out, and we're left alone. I'm glad he's back to being nice, if you can call that nice. Would you rather he go back to shoving you around the cafeteria? No, I know. He, his hands are tied. I'm still a little burnt on it, though. I pivot, trying to change the subject. So, are you excited for your fight this weekend? Redline looks confused. He said the 8th. That's next week. No, Redline, it's this weekend. You've got six days. No, it's... He takes a second to count on his fingers and stands straight up. I have six days? That's so soon. We gotta go. We? Bucky, go! <laughs> Redline charges out of the room, but before I can even stand up, he comes back in, grabbing his gym bag and charging out again. By the time I make it downstairs, slowed by the aching in my abs, I can make out the sight of Redline down the hall, walking alongside Bucky and Drayden. His voice is even more clear from this distance, shouting something akin to asking Bucky to hurry. We meet halfway with Bucky, with Bucky looking like he's ready to kill someone, but in a fun way. Drayden looks anxious. Xander, what's up, Buck? I... Bucky pulls Redline into a headlock, forcing a yip from the yeen. Yip from the yeen. You're just in time to watch this little mutt get demolished. They start bickering, and I fall in line next to Drayden. Mind filling me in? <laughs> Redline said he's got a new fight, and... And he asked me to fight him. You think you can ruin my date, little man? Date? Drayden blushes and stammers, but Redline pipes up. Hey, I didn't ruin anything, and I just want to spar. You want to spar, do you? I'll spar with you, little furball. They're both laughing with some even more aggressive grappling. We make it to an empty gym, and the two of them rush in. Drayden's face is still red, seemingly unsure what to say. Here you go. Water time. Ugh. Love this music. Okay. He and I lean back against the wall as Redline and Bucky get into fight gear. Well, Redline gets into his. Bucky's still wearing his uniform, but has MMA gloves on now. All right, little buddy. All right, all right, little buddy. You know how to make a, you know how to take on a bigger pu. <laughs> Oof! Redline was already charging on in, rocking Bucky's gut with a solid straight. Bucky didn't move, only laughing as his arms wrap around the yin. See, now there's your first mistake: getting in within, getting within throwing range. In a grand spectacle, Bucky lifts Redline up and slams him down on his back. He lets out a yip of pain, but manages to get his arms around Bucky's neck. Rrr, what's your next move, little tw twerp? His little arms were draped over the kangaroos. He tightens the guillotine hold. Bucky sputters and coughs out a laugh, and I can see his legs repositioning, crawling up towards red lines. <laughs> With a deep guttural grunt, the bigger man starts to stand upright. Redline's tail is wagging as he's lifted up into the air, and by the sounds of Bucky's coughing, only tightening the choke. Bucky chokes again, arching his back to lift Redline up even higher, and slams him down onto the mats hard. Redline lets out a much louder yelp, his body very clearly convulsing as the pain rocks up through his body, but remains locked tight around Bucky's neck. His legs kick out, failing to find purchase on the mat as lack of oxygen starts to show its signs. After another few seconds, the coach taps Redline's arm three times, signaling his submission. Redline laughs and releases the hold, laying spread eagle under Bucky as both of them try to gather more air. Turn to Drayden, who seems enamored. Should we stop this? Drayden doesn't respond, only staring at the two as Bucky swaps to putting Redline in a chokehold, guiding him on how to break out of it. Drayden! Hmm, what? Oh, no, I think they're just, uh, I mean, they aren't using actual power, right? Uh, it should be fine, I think. I guess that's fair. They aren't supposed to be using, they aren't supposed to use full power, but that slam sounded pretty heavy. Maybe that's just how they spar. Come to think of it, I don't think I've ever watched the two of them actually spar. It's normally Redline and his friends. So, Bucky spars with you? Huh? No, I mean, he'll hold the pads if we have an odd number of people, but 
Normally it's me and, and uh, it's me with uh, one of Redline's buddies. Oh, uh, I see. What are they like? His friends? Uh, I'm not really sure. I don't pay enough attention to them. They kind of just blend in with everyone else down here. Except with Redline, of course, but we're roommates, so... Drayden nods and folds his arms over his chest. Redline and Bucky are standing now, two of them squared up just outside striking distance. Redline growls something, and Bucky pounds his own gut, beaming wide, inviting Redline to strike him. Redline's next fight is with, is with someone bigger than him, so... The cat lets out a chuckle and sighs. Trust me, he told us all about it. Bucky actually coached Jesse for about a year before he got bumped up for t up to Tier 2. So he switched coaches? Alright, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks, or if you can, if you can blah. check out the uh, Patreon if you can. It definitely helps the channel. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye